Okay, here we are at what the local antique mall to me is, and it is a very expensive place. It's very high end, but they have fantastic quality, and it really is um, great stuff. I am trying to do a voiceover, but I realize the, the, the video is playing stuff, so I'm not sure this is going to work. This is gorgeous glass. This is not too far inside the door. It's gorgeous glass work. And, um, biscuit jar. Now we've got another vendor. Dalton figurines go from 25 to 85. You see several balloon sellers in there. Um, they're very popular. And that's been made for a long time by Royal Dalton. So you really have to watch the marks to find one that's worth anything. And then, oh, there's him that little girl in the back she's beautiful um and then you just find a, a deer head there were animal heads like randomly around this place to figure out how to do a voice it was out. interesting um some beautiful crystal chandelier pieces someone dismantled it which sometimes happens i'm telling myself in that video right now how i need to figure out how to do a voiceover um because of I, I could not figure out what that was i really couldn't um it was such an odd shape this seemed to be a decorative spoon um i had trouble because i couldn't use the other hand to to make the camera do close-ups so that was a challenge that was a gorgeous looking piece but i couldn't get anywhere near it I couldn't see it clearly to get to it. And then there's paperweights and then some interesting bisque heads. I really like the paperweights. They're beautifully done. Um, so, oh, you see my, my bandage hand getting in the way of the camera. Uh, this was all Beatrix Potter stuff on that shelf, and every one of them was a music box. And then there's this just beautiful wow. i mean there was just great beautiful pieces everywhere you looked in here but it was also very crowded and i was trying very hard not to get um people in the in the videos and uh so i like the owls in the back and uh nice piece of copper finish i know it's going very quickly and i am sorry for that um there i knew it was a huge place oh. and i wanted to see around and I've see if i could that. find anything oh, and mike was waiting in the car because he decided not to come in now right. those mice cracked me up because i'm pretty sure i'd just seen them their bookends i could not find the price tag for them um crazy lamp lady jocelyn just sold a pair of them and i was so jealous that i saw them in there and could not find out what the price was now these were really cool um and then there's all this somebody must have had a collection of this uh copperware copper copper luster i believe it's called and there was just a lot of it in this case That's cool. So I really think they must have bought a collection. Yeah. Everything in the bottom is old globes or glass shades for lamps. I really, really liked that one. And that was $28. And it was the most inexpensive one in that corner. And I really liked it, but it had no shade. So I didn't quite know what I could do with it. Because um, at the moment, there's, there's nowhere in my house to put anything. That was a really nice set. Um, I don't need another set of big dishes. I have Blue Willow from my great-grandmother. Good Staffordshire British stuff. This was some really neat stuff, but I was more intrigued by the fact that they used chicken wire to replace the glass on a really nice um, china closet. That, that, that was an intriguing find, all that chicken wire. Uh, and every piece of furniture in this place is is a really gorgeous quality antique table or a biora and everything except these glass cases every other piece of furniture has a tag and that whole row as you saw 
Oh, there's another one of the giant vases. These little carpets, too, also are all for sale. They all had little price tags safety pinned to the corner. It's a whole cabinet full of Royal Dalton. And I really like the two Japanese ladies. Um, but there's a lot of Asian antiques in here. And there are some stunningly large... Uh, vases from Japan and China. That is Satsumi up the top, and you can see the Jasper Ware. This blue green vase, I was just loved. I should have taken more time on it. Um, that was another lovely little piece. That is a dish. That lid, that's a lid on that one that comes up. Um, more bisque, German, German bisque. And some interesting art glass. That was a really nice set. That's really early glass. Probably late Victorian. But every price I looked at was on point for the value. And there's another really nice large vase. Now that one would be Chinese. This cracked me up. I think it's a pair. $145. You two can have a giant pair. Yeah. There's another giant vase. And it, the specialty in this shop, and it, there's a lot of different vendors in this shop. But I really like that one. Um, but there's a lot, a lot of Asian and a lot of early glass and crystal so but they're all on point for the price that was its strangest pipe um, but you really just places like these don't discount going to them simply because of the fact you're going to learn so much and you're going to see such incredible quality pieces. Now this was upstairs. They had the more um, used, well-loved furniture upstairs. And um, so this is the stuff that could use a polish or wasn't as high end. And it's packed up here with furniture. And some really nice stuff. I really... I love this mirror, but his, what is up with his neck? Where is his neck? What was the wood carver smoking or drinking? Now that, that is to weigh the baby in the doctor's office. And it's pretty old since it has the wicker. So I thought that was pretty cool. I really love this, this Biora. I thought that was beautiful. Now, I don't know who made this lamp, but I really kind of like the shape I didn't like the color at all, but I like the shape. And the cradle. This cradle's gorgeous. This is, I'm not sure this would be East Lake style, but it really was a beautiful cradle. Kind of would have wanted for my kids had I actually given birth to any. Um, that was another Bura. There's a wicker. Um, baby carriage, but it looks to be a reproduction one. And then this is a wicker. Um, I, I don't know if you'd call that a daybed or, or it's the, the signs aren't high enough to be safely used as a crib. But still, it was a pretty piece. And then there's all these one off chairs. I have a couple of chairs that have some gorgeous, you know, these round back ones that have a rose carved into them. I have one or two like that hiding in my basement. I really like this. This one was probably the oldest one there. And really cool looking. Nice little... These bridge lamps would have been reading lamps and a lot of these little short ones. Um, they were that size because they would sit next to your chair and give you a light just for you at the chair. And this whole corner is artwork and old photos, but the frames on most, now those are Erte, but the frames are really pretty good on some of them. 
But this little corner spot, I did like this table. There's a lot of wear to the edges, but the inside here under the glass was cool. Now we're back downstairs. I really, really, that's the biggest piece of Satsume I have ever seen. And then that one too, but I really like that first one. That's, you look, that went right back to it. It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Now these are all old perfumes. There wasn't a one on there that wasn't $30, and most of them were way higher than that. But they were Chanel and, uh, what was the Elizabeth Taylor one, White Diamonds? So they were all pretty named um, perfumes. Now there were some old tools there, all in fantastic shape. That intrigued me. That was a really beautiful little piece. I wanted to see if it had who made it. Um, I think it did say it, and I should have spoken it out loud so that I could have found out. If you hear the whistling in the background, that's off the original video. That's because there was just this noise, like a tea kettle going off, all at the back end of the store. It was driving me crazy because it's a high pitch and it makes my ears hurt. This was pretty cool. It's all this tiny, tiny little pewter stuff. And this stuff's actually metal. And it was $150. Um, lots of Pyrex, some Wedgwood, some more little Nippon pieces, and then some Fiesta Ware, little fairy lamp, lovely painted tray. So... It really was cram-packed. Um, there was some little stuff here. I, I did not find a single thing, though, really, that was a, a price that was good for a reseller. I mean, and everything really was on point for a good retail price. And some things were way, way above uh, retail price. Um, for most of us. So. Those kitties. I really was tempted. But that one, the tips of the ears are broken off. And I don't know that much about redware to know if those kitties were worth it. I wouldn't have been able to sell the one. That's an interesting piece, because that's that was $8. And I'm pretty sure that's celluloid. But I just didn't, again, it's not something I knew enough about to be willing to, to try it. Because I don't know if I could have recouped the $8. I really like the poodle, but at $6, I just feel that for that poodle, that probably was all I would have been able to... I wouldn't have been able to flip it for double, which is what you want to aim for. You want to flip things for at least double because you need to have wiggle room in case you put a sale on for things that have been in your store for a while. Um, then you have to have wiggle room to be able to still make a little bit of money, even if it's only a dollar. You still need to have a way to make a little bit. So I think some of that was Fenton. He was cute. You hear me sighing because I see stuff that I go, oh, I could, and then I see the price and go, eh, no, I can't. But this is why um, a lot of the YouTubers I watch, they go to the an local antique malls, and this is the only one local to me, and it is a fantastic place, but it is a high-end place, and I really... Oh, love that. I turned that ever so carefully. I would have bought that for my son in a heartbeat. But Crack it's got nothing. No price. I just thought it was gorgeous. Forget me not. And the handle's got a crack. And the crack of a handle makes me nervous. 
you know, because then the minute you go to pick it up, you're going to forget someday that that cracks on the handle and the thing will be on the floor. And I really was curious. I was willing to take that up front because his birthday was coming up. And then I saw the crack. Now these, I knew what these were. These are the obi for a kimono. And they're gorgeous. But there's damage to that one. There shouldn't be all those threads sticking out. Um, I don't think the price on them was unreasonable. The price on the one was, on that one right there, was $120. They are authentic. They are hand-woven silk. The one that was damaged was 80 I really don't find that unreasonable for those. And they were older ones, and they were hand-done, and they were gorgeous. This vendor's case is nothing but... A lot of Asian work. And then in the back, I found these cats, which cracked me up. And that piece of wood carving, I was in love with that piece, too. But it was $80. But I did find a fairy in their place. Of all things, I found a fairy hiding on the wall. Um, this was the another part. Some of the upstairs is sectioned. So you have to go to another part of the building to get up to this. And this is all toys. It's all toys. There's a ton of dolls in the corner, and in another corner, there's a ton of Hallmark ornaments. Um, but they were, again, all on point, really, for what I'd sell them at um, online. So it, it was neat to see the different varieties, um, but I couldn't, I didn't find anything I could flip. Not here. Um, so I think there's going to have to be a road trip out to, I really did like the yeoman. Um, there's going to have to be a road trip. There is another type of antique mall out near where my sister lives in Chester County. And I think I might have better luck out there, but this is the only antique mall near me and it's an expensive one. Um, so if you're in an urban area though, you can find them. If you're in a city, you certainly can find places. But um, if you're in an urban area that's like half an hour from a city, it can be a lot harder. So don't give up, though. Go to these places, learn what they've got, see what they have, learn what type of things it is. Um, I mean, I saw some gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. So now I know to look for similar. Um, but... It's, it was just kind of, I expected, you know, I expected it to be loaded with really great stuff. I didn't expect to not find anywhere where I could find anything. Um, but I still feel it was worth it. For what I saw, just for the learning experience, and just for the eye candy of all that Japanese stuff, I was in heaven. And I really wish my son had come in with me because he really, really, really would have enjoyed that. Um, that one doll we passed was one I'd never seen before. It was of Prince Charles when he was invested as the Prince of Wales. So, but up here was a lot of fabric and some quilts and doilies and pieces of tapestry. And I thought, you know, I have boxes of embroidery work that I have not gone through yet. So I wasn't going to worry about that. Again, this, this whole corner is nothing but dolls. And, uh, and there were some Barbies, which I laughed at the prices Hi because there. I have, I'm just I had that in Medalla and like what wasn't able to sell it. I finally sold it at a flea market for $8. I could not move that. Hit along. that little subscribe button that's down at the bottom. And if you want to get notified when I have a new video up, that's what that little bell is for, so just go ahead and click on that. Then you'll never miss an episode, or if I get enough people, I might go live streaming. Um, but you'll never miss one of my videos if you just hit that little bell, because then you get a little notice pop-up that, hey, she's got another one out. So just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks!